Let's start by quickly reviewing what we can remember about concentration of hydrogen ions and pH. So, concentration of the hydrogen ion in moles per liter and the concept of pH. If we were given the pH and we want to convert that into a concentration of hydrogen ions, we would simply go 10 to the negative of whatever the pH value happened to be. So if it was 3, 10 to the negative 3. Conversely, if we're given the concentration of hydrogen ions and we want to turn that into a pH value, we need the negative log of the concentration of the hydrogen or hydronium ion. Now, water has an ability to dissociate, to break apart with itself. We know that this equilibrium constant is fairly small in the order of 10 to the minus 14. Now, a quick note here is that value changes. We're very familiar with what happens at 25 degrees Celsius. If we take a closer look at this, we can see here that as the temperature is increasing, the reaction is favoring the forward direction as the constant becomes bigger. That would suggest that the heat term is on this side, that the addition of heat shifts this reaction forward. So this process is an endothermic one, delta H, would be some sort of positive value in this case. Let's take a look at this in an ice table. Again, I stands for the initial concentration. Now, it might seem a bit puzzling, but what's the initial concentration of water in water? Well, we know that there are a thousand grams of water present in one decimeter cubed or one liter, assuming a density of one. If I divide that by 18, the molar mass of water, I can come up with that the concentration of water in water is approximately 56 moles per decimeter cubed. So I'm going to say that the initial concentration of water in water is 56. And there's none of my other ions present. So that's the initial value. Now, what's the change? Now, I don't really know what the change is. I know what the equilibrium constant is, so I'm going to say that this is going to go down by x, and these both will then have to go up by x. Note that they're both going to go up by the same amount. I'm going to produce an equal number of acids and base particles. As a result, the solution is always going to remain neutral. And finally then, once I reach equilibrium, I'll have 56 minus x, and x of this, and x of this. Now, the equilibrium constant for this reaction would be the concentration of H plus times the concentration of OH minus over the concentration of water. Now, the concentration of water essentially remains unchanged. The small value of the equilibrium constant suggests that we can say that this is roughly 56, which means that this value never changes. It's roughly going to be 56. Because it never changes, we can actually combine it with the equilibrium constant. So this and this combined give us what we call the ionization constant for water, Kw, the concentration of H plus times the concentration of OH minus. Now in this case, that's going to be x squared equals, and we'll use 25 first of all, 1 times 10 to the minus 14. That gives me x then as 1 times 10 to the minus 7, or the pH of 7. Now that makes sense at the neutral pH we have an equal number of acid and base particles, and we would be at 7. Now, suppose, though, we go to a warmer temperature, 50 degrees. The only change would be in this line here. And now when we solve for x, we get a different value. In fact, we get this as being 10 to the negative 6.6, .6, so the pH turns out to be 6.6. .6. It's still neutral because I still produce the same number of acid and base particles, but the neutral pH is now at a lower value, 6.6 .6 being the cutoff. pH is higher than 6.6 .6 would be basic and lower acidic. 
Conversely, if I put this value in for Kw at zero, I get, moving in the other direction, I get a neutral pH of 7.4. So that value that we've been taught for a long time, pH 7 is neutral, really only holds true at 25 degrees Celsius. Change the temperature, you change the value of that neutral pH. Time to introduce a few other terms. We now know that the concentration of OH times the concentration of H plus equals the ionization constant for water. Now, if I take the negative log of both sides, so I'll take the negative log of this, and we'll take the negative log of Kw. I'm now going to introduce this can then be expanded to the negative log of OH. And because I'm um, multiplying these two together, that's the same as adding logs minus the log of H plus equals the negative log of Kw. We define these negative logs, and we've seen them before. In this case, that's the same as pH, the negative log of the hydrogen ion. We define the negative log of hydroxide as the pOH. And we define the negative log of Kw as pKw. At 25 degrees Celsius, this value is 14. So we have a little relationship here that so long as we're at 25, pH plus pOH must equal 14. But again, that's true only at 298 um, Kelvin. Let's now employ this relationship in this problem. Determine the pH, pOH, H plus, and hydroxide concentrations of a 0.2 mole per decimeter cube solution of HCl. So let's begin by quickly putting down the ice table for HCl. You might recall that we use a one-way arrow for a strong acid. And the initial, the change, and the equilibrium. So we start with 0 0.020 and none of this and none of this. Now HCl is a strong acid, so essentially we means all of this dissociates. We can assume almost 100% of it associate, so there's almost none of it left. That means that this will go up by the exact same amount, and same with the chloride ion. So at equilibrium, we'll have 0 0.020 moles per liter of H+. So now we can take the negative log of this number, and that will then give me the pH then of my solution, and I'll get 1.7. So I have the pH. This also is the concentration of the H plus ion taken care of. Now let's employ what we developed up here. I know that the pOH plus the pH equals 14. Putting in the pH of 1.7, gives me then a pOH of 12.3. So that would then be the pOH taken care of. And finally then the concentration of the OH ion would be 10 to the negative 12.3. And we can then take that value and turn that into a more recognizable number, that would be the same as roughly 5 times 10 to the negative 13 moles per decimeter cubed. Now a special note is I, I could have also arrived at the answer using this relationship, OH minus times H plus equaling 10 to the negative 14, 
So I could have brought that down and substituted it in here, and I would have arrived at exactly the same answer, just via an alternative route. In our next program, we'll take a look at pH calculations in further detail. Thanks again for watching.